This is Geometry Lesson 7-5, the SSA condition and the HL congruence. We have two more acronyms that we're going to use to introduce two more triangle congruence theorems. These are the last two congruence theorems that we'll use in this chapter, so there will be six total that we would be able to use to prove that triangles are congruent to each other. The first acronym, um, you'll notice that has a difference in size in the S's. It's big S, little s, A. And what that means is if two sides on the angle opposite the longer of the two sides in one triangle are congruent respectively, the two sides in the corresponding angle in the other triangle or in the other in another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. And we'll talk about this in a bit. It's like it's a little bit of a cumbersome theorem and so we'll have to talk about the size of those sides and how they work. And then the other theorem is that if you in two right triangle, the hypotenuse and a leg of one are congruent to the hypotenuse and the leg of the other, then the two triangles are congruent. So let's go ahead here and make some diagrams um, for the HL congruence theorem. If we know you have two right triangles, so that means you know this angle. If you know the hypotenuse, is are congruent to each other, and you just need one other set of sides, the leg, one of the sets of legs need to be congruent, then you can say that the sides, or then that the triangles are congruent using the HL congruence theorem. Now, the other one is a little bit more complicated to draw, so I'm going to use these examples down below to help us. It says if two sides in an angle opposite the longer of the two sides in one triangle congruent. This is the angle that we know, and these are the two sides that we know. The angle that we know is across from the longer of the two sides. Five inches is longer than two inches, so, and it's across from that one, so we know that big side, little side angle congruence theorem will work here. So here's a, so you could go ahead and draw a triangle, something like that, up here. So we have an angle, this say this is 10 and this is 3, and we did that over here. So the angle, side 10 and 3. So let's take a look here. If we have the angle, the side that it's across from is 2, and that is not the longest side. So we then can say there's not enough info on this one to state if all triangles would be congruent given that information. Let's take a look up here. We have a, hy um, we have a hypotenuse given to us and we have a right angle, but that's all we have. We need a leg. We need the leg in order to be able to state that um, the HL congruence theorem is at work here. So this also is not enough information. I'll just write NEI on that one. Okay, let's go to number two. I'll draw the picture out. It says it's a right triangle, so we know I have that right angle. The hypotenuse is 12 and the leg is 5. So we have a leg, we have a hypotenuse, and we have a right angle. So then we can say yes, these would be enough these conditions would be enough to, to state that all triangles with that same information would be congruent to them. So that's the HL congruence theorem. In part, in these four examples here, it says if triangles are congruent, justify with the triangle congruence theorem, otherwise write not enough to tell. So let's take a look here. We are given a set of angles, a set of sides, and we know that these sides would be congruent to each other because of the reflexive property. So we have a situation where it would be side, side, angle, but there's nothing here to tell us if the side across from angles that we know would be is the largest side, so we would say not enough to tell. Let's take a look here. We once again know a set of sides second set we can pr say are congruent because of the reflexive property and we have a set of angles. So once again I want to use side side angle but is angle A across from the largest side? And here it says that AB is larger than BD so once again not enough info to tell. Let's look at number seven. We'll use the reflexive property again. 
we have two sides at an angle, but this time they say BD is bigger than AB. So this is across from the angle that we know, and so we can use side, side angle. And make sure that when you mark that, you show a difference in your sizes of your S's when you're marking it. So big S, little s, A. Let's take a look at the last one. We have a 90 degree angle, so I'm thinking HL congruence theorem, but let's see if we have enough. We have the hypotenuse, and we have a set of legs using the reflexive property, so yes, I can use the HL congruence theorem. I have one more example that I'd like to do with you on this lesson. It's a, a proof. So I'd like you to read through the proof, and I'd like you to fill in as much as you can when you have filled it in the best of your ability then go ahead and start the video again and see how you did so here we are given that angle U and angle D are at right angles and that DA is congruent to UQ so I see the markings here write that on the given. Second line is to state that the two triangles are right triangles because of the definition of a right triangle. We have a common side in both triangles so we can use the reflexive property to say QA is congruent to QA. And now we, if we look at this we have enough information to say that our triangles congruent are congruent. We have on hypotenuse, we have right angles, and we have legs, so we can use the HL congruence theorem to state that those two triangles are congruent. There are two more examples on this sheet, but I'm going to use those as examples in, in our study in class. So this concludes our lesson 7-5.